it's getting cooler and getting drier here, so I'm gonna share with you how I'm changing up my skincare routine to reflect the change in weather. If you live in a climate that's fairly steady throughout the year, there's no reason to change your skincare. If it's working for you, just maintain the routine that you've got going. But you might have four distinct seasons like I do, and usually my skin changes about four times throughout the year and has different needs throughout the different seasons. Right now it's getting cool and it's getting dry, but it's still very sunny. So I'm focusing on hydration and getting rid of some of the pigment that's accumulated from the summer. My current morning fall skincare routine begins with my at-home skincare devices. I've already finished those. My skin is prepped and ready for my skincare, which is four steps. Cleanse or rinse, treatments, moisturizers, SPF, and then a little bit of makeup if I'm doing makeup that day. So let's talk cleanse or rinse. Nine times out of 10, I just do a rinse in the morning. I have dry, sensitive, mature, eczema prone skin. So I typically just rinse in the morning to avoid overstripping my skin. But in the fall and the winter months, I noticed that my dry skin can really tend to build up. And I actually ironically tend to cleansing a little bit more often in the fall and the winter months than I do in the spring and the summer. But when I do reach for a cleanser, it's a really gentle cleanser. The one that I'm using right now is the Mad About Skin Jelly Cleanser. It has squalane, which is absolutely a fabulous ingredient for cleansers for my really dry skin. I also love the Ordinary Squalane Cleanser. Fabulous cleanser. So when I do do a cleanse in the morning, it's very gentle. I've also been incorporating a little bit of manual exfoliation. Typically, I don't recommend manual exfoliation, but what I've noticed, particularly this year, and I'm not exactly sure why, is I have this flaky dry skin in the morning, and even sometimes a gentle cleanse, just with my hands, doesn't get it off. So I've been reaching for the Foreo Luna 4. This was gifted to me in PR by Foreo, so I really appreciate that. And what it is, it's a silicone manual exfoliator, and it has a gentle vibration. And I've noticed this is great for my dry, sensitive skin. I actually had the original Foreo years ago. I'm not sure where it ended up in all of our moves, but I'm really enjoying having that extra little bit of manual exfoliation. Now, I don't do this very often. It's maybe max once a week, if that, but it does definitely buff off all that dry, dead skin cell buildup that I get in the fall and the winter months. The next step in my skincare routine is treatments. The first step in my treatment is usually a hydrating toner. Right now, I'm using the Josh Rosebrook Hydrating Accelerating Toner. I absolutely love this toner, and it just preps my skin and hydrates my skin for the next steps. Another toner that I use in the fall, a lot more than I'll use in the spring and the summer months, is a gentle exfoliating toner. Again, to lift off those dry, flaky skin cells and also moisturize. So for mature skin, when you're thinking an exfoliating toner, you want to think about lactic acid. And I have two that I'm using right now. The first one is very gentle. It's by Pestle and Mortar, and it's their natural moisturizing factor, lactic acid toner. I love this toner because it gently exfoliates, but it also hydrates so nicely. Another one, if I'm feeling like I'm having a little bit of a breakout coming on, is the Mysama ABP11. Now this has several different exfoliators in it, but also is very, very gentle, in addition to kombucha and their signature green robust, which is a great antioxidant. So the three exfoliators in this are lactic acid, gluconolactone, which is a very gentle PHA, so polyhydroxy acid gentle exfoliator, and then a little bit, 1% of salicylic acid, which if I'm having a little bit of a breakout, I feel coming on, is the perfect toner to use. So right now I'm going to use the pestle and mortar natural moisturizing factors, and I just put a few drops in my hand and just pat it into my skin, over my moisturizing toner. Now I don't let these dry down too much. I just kind of, it would just take too long to get my morning routine done. So the next step is another antioxidant and brightener. So for the fall for me, because I've had that buildup of my pigment, because of sun exposure over the summer, I really tend to focus on treating my hydration and treating pigment. So right now, I'm moving back to my Curology formula with ascorbic acid, vitamin C. 
Over the summer, I was trying some vitamin C derivatives to see if I could keep off or stave off some of these little spots that come up typically with sun exposure. But I noticed that I wasn't getting the results that I was getting like I did last year with my Curology. So I've moved back to this formula and this has ascorbic acid 5%. As I said, my skin is a little bit sensitive, so I use a fairly low percentage of ascorbic acid. So ascorbic acid 5%, kojic acid 4%, and azelaic acid 10%. These are all lighteners and brighteners and antioxidants. So I just take about two pumps of my Curology, and my Curology comes, I get this larger bottle, so it comes every couple of months. Because in the fall, my focus is getting rid of my hypopigmentation. After my vitamin C formula, I come in with a serum that has tyrosinase inhibitors, brighteners, and lighteners. The two that I'm using right now are the May Love Fade Away and the Pillow Talk Derm Hyper Serum. You don't need to use both of these in one routine. I just kind of alternate them. The Hyper Serum is a little bit more moisturizing, I'm finding, than the May Love Fade Away. This has three lighteners and brighteners, kojic acid, alpha arbutin, and licorice root. The Hyper Serum has four lighteners and brighteners, plus one that helps a little bit with redness. So the Hyper Serum has kojic acid, alpha arbutin, diglucosal acid, and niacinamide is the fourth lightener and brightener in the serum. So today I'm feeling kind of dry, so I'm going to use three pumps of the Hyper Serum as my treatment serum for hyperpigmentation. And super hydrating. It has a little bit of glycerin in it too, and it's really hydrating. The next step, especially in my fall and winter skincare routines, is to add another layer of a hydrating mist or toner. If you haven't seen my video on hydration and how to pack that in, definitely check that out. But one tip you can do is use hydrating mist in between each step of your skincare routine. So after my treatment serums, I'm going to add in another layer of hydrating toner. Another option that I'm using right now is a biphasic toner by Dialba, their first spray serum. This has a little bit of lipid in it, so you have to shake it up before you use it. This is definitely a little bit more inclusive and more moisturizing than the hydrating toner by Josh Rose Brooks. So if you really feel like your skin is parched, you might want to try the Dialba. I've been using both, really enjoying both. So I have the next step in my skincare routine, my treatment, my mist, now I'm going to come in with my moisturizer. Right now I'm using the Peptide Dermatology Night Moisturizing Cream. I love this cream. It's in my holy grail list. And as I always say, Dermatology Peptide Night is not just for nights. I love it as a medium weight daytime moisturizer, especially in the fall and the winter for my morning skincare routine. So my moisturizing stuff is done. Now I'm going to move on to my SPF. I'm trying a couple different, very moisturizing sunscreens right now. The one that I absolutely love that I talked about earlier this summer that I decided to move into my fall and winter routine is the La Roche-Posay Anthelius UV Immune 400. This is a chemical sunscreen and it's so lush and hydrating. I absolutely have been enjoying the sunscreen in the cooler weather. It's very, very hydrating. And it takes a little while to work in, but once it soaks in, there's no white cast. Like I said, it's a chemical sunscreen. But while this dries down, I want to talk to you about a few other fall and winter sunscreens that are moisturizing and hydrating. One is one of my holy grails, the Peter Thomas Roth. Max Mineral 45. This is a mineral sunscreen with a little bit of tint, and it's also extremely hydrating. Another one that I really appreciate for hydration is the Dermatology Broad Spectrum. This is a combination sunscreen with zinc and a chemical, suns a chemical sunscreen. So this is a combo sunscreen, but it's very moisturizing. The new one that I tried that I ordered, I was going to tell you that is the complement to the La Roche-Posay UV Immune with the tinted formula. Unfortunately, this one has fragrance. I'm not sure why they've included fragrance in this. And the tint is a little dark for me, and I'm not sure it's going to work. It's a little orange and dark for me. I'm not sure it's going to work in the winter months, but I'm going to give it a try. I tried it yesterday, 
and I kind of felt like it made me a little bit too Oompa Loompa orange. So this might be a sunscreen fail. But as you can see, the La Roche-Posay UV Immune Untinted dries down really nicely. While my sunscreen is drying down, I'm going to put on a little bit of mascara and my lipstick for the day. I'm going to be trying a new technique with these two mascaras. This is the benefits that I use all the time. This is their lash primer, and I often use this just alone a couple layers, but I was wondering how it would look with the Tower 28 Lengthening and Curling Mascara because my lashes right now are very sparse. I've had a lot of allergies. I've been rubbing my eyes a lot, and my lashes are really thinning out. I have been using my Bagmana Post and my Revita Lash alternating each day, but unfortunately my lashes have definitely thinned out over the last couple months. So I'm going to try the Benefits Primer and then the Tower 28 over top to see if I can get a little bit of a fuller look to my lashes. Like I said, the allergies around here have been terrible, but I really love the Tower 28 lengthening and curling mascara. I don't use a curling wand for my lashes because I just find it's too harsh and I lose more lashes that way. So I've been really enjoying the Tower 28 whoops, lifting and curling mascara. So we'll let that dry down. I notice as this mascara dries down, it starts to lift and curl the lashes even more. My brows are definitely due for a little bit of tint and trim, but I really like this look. I'm going to do a little bit of lipstick, the Charlotte Tilbury Sheer Shimmer Lipstick. It's kind of a lip shimmer or more of a lip gloss, but it's a really pretty color for fall. Just a light mauve color. So that is the end of my fall skincare routine. I hope you've enjoyed today's video. If you have any questions about creating a fall skincare routine, definitely leave comments down below. I love hearing from you and definitely don't forget to subscribe, like, click that notification bell so you can join the Beyond 50 Skin community. We all love talking about skincare, hair care, and a little bit of makeup. Wishing you all a very skintastic day.